you are and have been voted ten times the uh, annual top sniper for the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> Where the hell did you get that from? Yeah. yeah. I voted for you. <laughs> no, it never happened. No. Mm -mm. Oh, it's on? <laughs> <laughs> Some of you might remember my buddy Mark, the orange juice spitter. <laughs> I just found out yesterday he's a former Navy SEAL. No wonder! No wonder! And Carter, I'm going to let you brag about yourself. Like, how many wall sits? What, like if you what did sit. she say? Mark Basic, finest sniper in the Navy. No, no. Second best. No, third. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe a couple dozen. That's right. <laughs> Boy, it's been cold today. Cold, wet, and windy. What have you been doing all day? Teaching guys how to shoot. Shoot what? Shoot <laughs> <laughs> rifle. <laughs> and to do it again. Boy, it's been cold today. Cold, wet, and windy. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but uh you were, uh, what? Before you become a SEAL. Go ahead, hit it, hit it, hit it. Before I became a SEAL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's was in uh, EOD for five years. And then saw the light. Yeah, well, I always wanted to go anyway, but EOD was the quickest way off the carrier, so, yeah. There you go. Bud's class, 142, I think. Yeah, very good. See, I know everything. Boy, it's been cold today. Cold, wet, and windy. What have you been doing all day? I mean, he's... <laughs> Boys were cold all day. Yeah, if it has. All right, here we go. <laughs> Boys been cold today. Cold, wet, and windy. What have you been doing today? <laughs> I've been teaching guys how to shoot. And you turned out to run sniper school. Yes. So let's talk sniper school. Let's talk. Hardest part for most guys. Most guys, it's the uh, stalking part of it. And SEAL sniper school, what's the difference between that and the Marine and the Army? You know, we pretty much modeled ours off the Marine Corps. We plagiarized all their stuff and went from there. <laughs> and the SBS. Yeah, Stick some guys went to the SBS sniper school, which is which is extremely hard also. Boy, it's been cold out there today. <laughs> cold and rainy. What have you been doing? I've been teaching guys to shoot outdoors since 7 o'clock this morning. Rifle, pistol? Both, rifle and pistol. Marksmanship fundamentals. Boy, it's been cold out there today. Cold, rainy, and windy. What have you been doing all day? I've been outside since 6 o'clock in the morning teaching guys to shoot. The last day it was 7 o'clock. Yes, I know. <laughs> That's why I hesitated on that. God damn. I backed it Are up. Are you sure you're a SEAL? I backed it up, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the uh, shooting, a lot of guys screw up on shooting. Failed not, a lot of guys. Uh, not necessarily because they were, most guys were screened in the commands prior to coming to sniper school. So we sort of got the best of the best. Boys, it cold out there today. Cold, wet, and <laughs> <laughs> rain. Damn, this ain't easy. Go ahead, just say it again. See Do it me again. doing them on my own. Do it again. What have you been doing all day? I've been teaching guys <laughs> What happened to the first question? Then we started off with uh, the Navy Qual, which is a easy test, but iron sights, 200 yard uh, Navy Qual test. And if you didn't pass that, the first thing we did was send you back. But it's not a hard test. If you couldn't pass that, you shouldn't be up there anyway. And then we went to the M14 uh, iron sights. We did NRA type shooting, and that helped out with confidence and organizational skills which work into your bulk on your 308 bolt gun and after that we did the wind mag and 50 cal boy it's been cold today cold wet and windy it's the end of march what have you been doing all day <laughs> <laughs> don't talk to me about throwing <laughs> shit in there no no i remember you telling me about shooting that landmine in bosnia mm -hmm. What was that one? I don't know. We just flopped down the line. They need to clear the uh, the path. And there was a landmine out there. And they said, go blow it up. And they thought I was EOD and I could do it with with a sniper rifle. So I went out there, shot up with a 50 cal. And first shot, it went high order. <laughs> <laughs> it was partly luck. <laughs> I didn't know the distance. I was guessing to win. And I 
one shot it went high order which is pretty cool and general's like yeah good job i'm like woo <laughs> and, the, and the holland guy uh, i think it was a holland sniper took around six or seven shots to to get it to go the other one that was laying there so we were just he got to shoot one i got to shoot one did uh so one shot one blow <laughs> is that a new term <laughs> i just made it up pretty good huh? i don't know that was that was there is wonder in most everything i see it's getting easier though yeah did you ever meet Carlos Hathcock? Yes. Yeah, he actually was at our sniper school in San Antonio as a guest uh, speaker. Mm -hmm. Good guy. Yeah, oh, yeah. We broke his ankle. Well, I didn't break his ankle. One of our guys broke his ankle. After one of the stocks, he was getting in the uh, pickup and old Ted. Remember Ted Moreland? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, is everybody in? Carlos was halfway in the tailgate. He floored it. And Carlos fell out and broke his ankle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we broke... Uh, well, White Feather's ankle, or, um, or Ted did. God, Ted. <laughs> yeah. But I remember Carlos ho hovering over me on the stock field. I had no idea what I was doing. I was flat on the ground, sweating. Uh, he, he couldn't say my name. He looked like a gunshot grizzly. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I got busted. Uh, I failed that stock about five minutes after that. <laughs> yeah, but he was, uh, Carlos was... Uh, Pretty good experience to have him down there in the sniper school. Yeah. yeah, real good. Mark and me were talking about Ted Moreland. Uh, Ted was a good friend of uh, mine and Mark's. He's the only SEAL to ever die parachuting without actually jumping out of the airplane. And Ted was just a, a really good guy. And by good guy, I mean he just, what he did that actually got him killed uh, was taking care of some of the other guys, the new guys. Now, the new guys in SEAL Team, you had to get 10 jumps, and one of those had to be a water jump. So you got five in airborne school, and to get your gold jump wings, uh, you had to get four more, and you had to get a water drop. And it wasn't always easy to get. And so when the opportunity came up, myself and Ted, and some of the other guys would really put out for the the guys, you know, get them their gold wings. So what we would do is we would load the aircraft with new guys that weren't free fall qualified. They were jumping static line parachutes. You know, you snap the line in and jump out the back and it deploys your chute for you. And then uh, all the free fallers uh, would load in there, you know, with our parachutes you had to pull, jump out at 12,000 feet or 18, you know, whatever we were doing. So what we would do is we would uh, launch the aircraft and we would get uh, to 1,200, 15, 2,000 feet. And I used to drop them even higher than that. I'd drop those guys really high sometimes. And push out the static line guys. And then we would take the plane to altitude. It would take some time to get up and then we would jump out all the free fallers, 12,000, 15, 18 and we would free fall down. And the plane would land and everyone would get back in the aircraft and go up and do it again and do it again. And in a good day, you know, it was really tough for the guys to get their jumps. He tried to get it. Ted was trying to get them their jumps. So what Ted did was when the aircraft went up to uh, drop the static liners, when the aircraft went up and drop the free fallers instead of Ted jumping with them. Ted went down with the aircraft and was loading in another group of static line guys because we would, the static line guys could not pack their own parachutes. That required a, uh, a parachute rigger, but we would. We would jump, land, repack our parachute, get in the aircraft. There was a delay. There was a delay of time. So what Ted did, uh, is he went down with the aircraft in the attempt to pick up another group of static liners and take them to altitude and drop them so they would get two jumps for every one of ours uh, without the delay. He was, he was just being a good guy. He could have jumped, he should have jumped, uh, but he didn't. He still had his parachute on his back. The plane landed and it was a new type of aircraft and when they landed they could not depressurize the aircraft. They could not get the door open. 
and uh, the air crewmen were trying and trying and trying to force this door open it would not force it was a really big military aircraft uh, could not get it open could not get it open and Ted went up there and he forced that door open and when it opened uh, all that pressure it, it sucked him blew him right out of the aircraft and Ted fell from a really high distance he still had his parachute on uh, but he wasn't wearing his jump helmet and he fell out of that aircraft and he landed straight on the top of his head and he sat straight up and he looked at the aircraft and then he, he just he fell over so, uh, uh, me and Ted uh, Ted used to uh, uh, never pass me never ever pass me in the team area that he didn't call me Don Juan Don Juan Don Juan Don Juan so, uh, Ted Moreland's death Ted was a sniper Ted Moreland's death was my son's first experience with the whole memorial uh, type of thing and we took a uh, took a nice uh, high caliber round and my son and I shined that thing up just as shiny as it, it, we could get it and uh, you know I took him up to view Ted's body Ted was in his his dress blues and the uh, casket and my son he was just a little boy he'd never seen anything like that and I got him to take that bullet and slide it right in Ted Moreland's uh, dress blues, and he he was interned with that. So, uh, good guy, Ted Moreland. There was a great story of Ted in uh, Panama. Ted was a you know a sniper and during the invasion of Panama. He was uh, conducting an operation with his platoon, this combat. And Ted was a point man, point man sniper type of stuff. And Ted had a really kind of big nose, big pointed nose, pretty prevalent. And we had these things called challenge and replies to where in the dark, if we wanted to identify you coming back in, we would sell, yell something. Could be anything. You'd say apple, and the other guy knew to say pie. Uh, usually we use numbers and a combination of eight. So if I said five, you would say back three, and, and you were good to go. And so Ted went off to do a reconnaissance of the uh, target they were about to assault and had been gone a while. And uh, the pl platoon was in a layup position, and they could hear somebody coming back through the uh, jungle, and everybody eased their weapons up nice and tight. And when they saw him, one of the guys, whatever the challenge and reply was, went, four. And he just froze. Four. Nothing happened. And they were like, four. And they said in the moonlight, you could see the silhouette of Ted's nose. And he slowly went. And they were like, get in here, you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> get in here, you idiot. So, that shit happens, the bad old good old days. But uh, thought I'd share that. Uh, talking to Mark when he mentioned the name Ted Moreland today. Boy, I've a lot of good guys out there, a lot of good guys. I lost a good buddy yesterday. He was 50 years old. 50 years old. So, I don't know. Good times, good memories, and... Uh, Old Ted, when you see old to die parachuting that never actually jumped, and just being a good guy, that's all he was doing, he was just being a good guy.